What's good with it, ladies and gentlemen? Big Gooch Old Cat back here once again. How's the wife? Has the kids? Great, perfect, amazing. Today, we're going to be checking out the craziest TV hijackings. Now, I don't typically watch TV uh, often. Oh, actually, ever. I never really watch TV. But if I was to ever watch TV, right, I would want to watch the regular scheduled programming that I signed up for. How am I going to be 15 minutes into watching Family Guy and then some random ass nigga hijacks the broadcast just to tell me to buy his mixtape? Like, I, like, bro, bro, d bro, don't nobody want to buy that shit? Yo, mama didn't even want to buy that shit. What makes you think I'm going to buy it? It's crazy. People are just delusional out here. I'm a little bit sick as well. That's why I'm looking a little bit more homeless than usual. Just ignore that. All right. Anyways, we're going to get into this. Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe. New merch is in the description. Make sure you guys go ahead and check that out. Support your boy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's get into this. Teletubbies. What the fuck is that? <laughs> is that like a Bang Bros scene? What is, what is that blurred? That looks like a scene. Teletubbies Hijack. A lesser known hijack that hasn't been talked about on YouTube yet is the Teletubby Hijack. On Teletubbies? On January 4th, 2000, a broadcast of the children's television series Teletubbies on GMA Network in the Philippines was replaced by a still photo of actress Rosanna Roses for several seconds. What? The photo shows one of Roses' breasts exposed, prompting oh a my God. from the movie and television don't show review it. and don't... classification board. I'm As much as I like titties, okay? Don't show that here, okay? Okay, don't show that. I'm not trying to get banned again. Just DM it to me. Don't don't post it here. GMA official stated that the incident was. Who would do that on a Teletubbies broadcast? Who pressed a button while helping repair a computer? This is all the information that I could find, and this topic is very obscure. There's really not that much information on this. Bro, somebody's hijack. definitely getting fired. But TV. Somebody's hijack. definitely getting fired. In March 2017, intruders broadcast pornographic content for approximately 20 minutes on Tuba TV. When PM and 1 30 p.m. 20 TV minutes TV channel in Senegal run by the Marid Sufi order in a statement the channel's management said unreservedly condemned this criminal act oh which seems to be my a god and a satanic trick now the question is right exactly what category was it was it like black on white you know a little bit more freaky stuff like what are we talking are we talking like some black on white white on black maybe black on on white, on black, maybe like an Oreo sort of situation. Like, what did we talk? What did they hijack the the network to post on there? Billy Run Station usually broadcasts religious programs advocating oh, Islamic that's values crazy. and teachings, including sermons and prayers, which corn is not part of their teaching. Oh, they knew so exactly the what they were doing then. Is most likely someone who's against Islam, and sadly, the hijacker hasn't been identified from the research I've done. Disney Channel hijack. On September 7, 2012, the Disney Channel was interrupted on the Dish Network, replacing six minutes of Lilo and Stitch with a portion of a hardcore corn movie. Oh One my god! Film, Yo, what is wrong with these niggas? Popping in time to time while the Lilo and Stitch movie glitches for a bit. Yo, Afterwards, why do they why do they post why do they post instead? replacing Lilo and Stitch. After the six minutes end, the Lilo and Stitch movie resumes playing. A mother of three kids actually recorded this incident as she recorded the Lilo and Stitch movie so she can replay the movie for her kids. But like you guys know by now, she ended up recording something else. Jeez. To this day, we have no answers. Jeez. And after watching news reports, it seemed to be some type of hijack or glitch. But what do you guys think? Bro, somebody is most definitely getting executed because it's like, dude, there's a bunch of kids, there's a bunch of children, little creatures, okay, watching Lilo and Stitch. I was one of those kids, bro. I was one of those little children, one of those little creatures that was watching Lilo and Stitch back way back when, okay? This is probably where my addiction started. How are you going to traumatize those young creatures by showing them such filth? Okay, if you see, if you never did that, I would have never ended up this way. If whoever hijacked that shit is probably the reason why I have this addiction today. OK, if you didn't do that, I probably would have never ended up this way. I would probably been a, a nice, upstanding citizen. But because you do this, you expose me to all this filth. OK, this is why I ended up this way. I didn't choose this. OK, I didn't choose this at all. How's Disney signal hijacking? Why no, is it always right. Disney? Another Disney related one. 
In Middletown, New Jersey in May of 2007, children tuned into the Disney Channel to watch Handy Manny. However, oh, something my unexpected favorite. would happen because midway through the episode, hardcore corn would Oh pop my up. god, dude, provided, why? Launched an investigation into why? how Again? hardcore corn was broadcasted during the popular Yo, cartoon Yo, Disney, program. three strikes and you're out, dog. Paul Dunleavy was taken aback when he found his five-year-old son watching explicit content instead of the intended cartoon featuring a bilingual latino handyman named manny garcia and his talking tools the incident occurred around 9 30 a.m and was nah. described by comcast spokesman uh, Fred saturday Andrea morning cartoons an tool? issue in a local new jersey facility de andrea acknowledged the programming error stating that it was promptly detected and corrected he apologized to affected customers and clarified that the mistake was made by comcast not disney details such oh as my god of the explicit broadcast, the number of affected homes, specifics about the error's cause, and potential disciplinary actions were not disclosed by De Andrea. Disney Channel spokeswoman Karen Hobson emphasized that Disney sought assurance from Comcast regarding preventive measures for such offensive incidents in the future. The New Jersey Board of Public Utilities, responsible for cable what? industry regulations in the state, also requested a meeting with Comcast to discuss the matter and ensure appropriate steps are taken to avoid similar disruption. This shit was not even hijacked. There was no hijacking here. No hijacking here took place. You mean to tell me some nigga had, had, had corn on his hard drive and it accidentally slipped out and made its way to the handy mandy pro uh, TV broadcast? Is that what you mean to tell me? You telling me that it was your fault? That's what they literally said. They said it's your fault, chat. That's what they said. They said it was their fault. It was it was on the fault of Comcast. That means somebody there brought the illicit material to the workplace and pu and put it before the children. Yeah, that guy needs to be put on some kind of list. Okay, you know what list I'm talking about. Who received a direct apology from Comcast expressed concern about the impact on his son, who felt distressed, thinking he had done something wrong. The incident raised questions about the trust parent plays in programming and the need for measures to prevent such occurrences. That's crazy. Believe it or not, this was actually considered lost media. Since this has only happened once for a few seconds, meaning that most likely nobody recorded the incident. However, on Surprising. April 4th of 2023, somebody posted the interruption on the internet archive. Oh my and god. I can confirm that the interruption only lasted 31 seconds. Luckily, 31 I 31 seconds is way Way too to long. It, it is now removed, but they still have a few screenshots up on the site, which I clearly cannot show you guys. And uh, yeah, the video was extremely hardcore. Yeah, it's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. On February 11, 2013, the emergency alert system of five television stations in Montana, Michigan, Wisconsin, and New Mexico experienced a hijacking, disrupting broadcasts with a false alert about a zombie apocalypse. Zombie apocalypse? Was a hoax by local authorities, what the attributing fuck? it to hackers getting access to the emergency alert system equipment of various stations. The first occurrence took place in Great Falls, Montana, during the Steve Wilco show on CBS <laughs> affiliate KRTV. <laughs> Steve Wilco. Alert warned of the dead rising from their grave. Oh Later my day, god! CBS affiliate, WKBTDT, ABC affiliate. Zombies? WKBT, Yo, I would lose my CBS shit, I swear station, to god. WNMU. I, I played too much Michigan, Walking Dead. I mean, I played too much Wisconsin, Last of Us. Respectively, also fell victim to similar zombie themed alerts during primetime programs. I just want to point out the fact, okay? If there was ever a zombie apocalypse, this is the most fakest shit I've ever seen. Since when have you seen a nigga zombie like this? I've never, in all the zombie games, movies that I've ever watched, I've never seen a nigga zombie. This niggas, niggas, I've never seen a nigga zombie. Niggas don't become zombies, okay? Niggas don't become zombies like this. This is specifically, this is specifically for everyone else other than niggas, okay? Julia, K-E-N-W in Portland, New Mexico, faced a similar situation that led to the arrest of the hackers. Two days after the initial hijacking, a morning show on WIZM-FM in La Crosse played the audio recording of the hoax 
Folks Alert, triggering WKBTDT emergencies alert system once again. That's in crazy. February of 2017, radio Yo, what station would you do? WZZY what would Indiana you do? experienced a similar incident using the same zombie apocalypse message as the 2013 hijacking. Oh my god. investigating the incidents found vulnerabilities in the emergency alert systems, including authentication bypass security and default passwords listed in user manuals. Default passwords? ABS, ABC, and PBS Are these stupid? were affected, leading ABC 10 and CW5 to disconnect from the EAS system to prevent further intrusions. Oh my god. The FCC prohibited Did the they use catch of them? EAS Do they ever catch these people? Genuine emergencies, threatening fines for violations. The government responded to the breaches by emphasizing the importance of securing EAS equipment, warning of cybersecurity threats, and urging broadcasters to update security measures. FEMA highlighted vulnerabilities in EAS encoders slash decoders, emphasizing the potential for outsiders to access station equipment. The FCC and FEMA expressed concerns about national security threats posed by false alerts Jeez. and advised broadcasters to reset passwords and enhance security. Investigations by local and federal authorities, possibly including the FBI and FCC, revealed the overseas origin of the hijacking. Oh, it was the overseas! The were reportedly caught and arrested, but details about their identities and charges remain undisclosed. Okay. Authorities At least they got caught. What the fuck is this nigga? Is this nigga dancing? Reassuring the public of no danger. <laughs> After the 2017 <laughs> incident in Indiana, the Randolph County Sheriff's Department confirmed the false alarm and hoax, emphasizing the need for heightened cybersecurity measures. How much you want to bet, chat? It was some random ass 14 year old kid in Serbia that hijacked this shit and did all this and caused havoc over here, bro. It was just some random ass kid, probably 13, 14 years old, that just somehow got everybody to be in a craze over a zombie apocalypse. Niggas genuinely thought. Back then, World War Z was gonna happen, bro. They was pa they was packing their bags. Some nigga that was watching Steve Will Coast that night definitely had some kind of underground bunker, and he was preparing to go in that. And then it was revealed that it was fake. And then he was like, "Ah." That is insane. And hoax emphasizing the need for heightened cybersecurity measures. Captain Midnight. On April 27, 1986, John R. McDougall, an American electrical engineer known by the alias Captain Midnight, uh -oh. disrupted the HBO satellite signal. They on have his gubby? During the broadcast of The Falcon and the Snowman. Oh my his god. Act, lasting four and a half minutes, reached the eastern half of the United States Holy and was a protest shit. against HBO's perceived high rate for satellite dish owners. Dog, you can't John, get, you can't pay for that much publicity. What the? Uplink station engaged in a transmission control battle with the entire HBO East Coast, but eventually relinquished control to avoid damaging the satellite. While the intrusion caused minor inconvenience to viewers, what? the Federal Communications Commission and the FBI investigated the incident. Dude, what does that say? Good evening, HBO, from Captain Midnight. Captain Midnight is what they used to call me in high school. I was a I was a night rider, but anyways, that's besides the point. Twelve ninety five a month. No way. Is this nigga advertising his OnlyFans or some shit? What is this nigga doing? What What do you mean? What does he mean by twelve ninety five a month? What does that mean? This is a terrible way to go about advertising your OnlyFans or your Fansly man or your Snapchat Premium, whatever the fuck this is. Dog, you gotta put the link. He didn't even put no link in there. You gotta put the link to what they what you want them to see. You can't you can't just put twelve ninety five a month, bro. You you got all the you got all the eyeballs on the east coast of the United States watching. These are hundreds of millions of people, and you didn't even execute this shit right. And you got this shit up for four minutes. You didn't even execute this right. You did not execute this right at all. I would have had all the links. I would have had all the links and made sure they were clickable. What are you doing, my man? What the fuck is going on? authorities after a tourist overheard him discussing the event leading oh. to a five thousand dollar fine one year probation and a suspension of his amateur radio license That's it? this event gained That's significant it? attention prompting the u.s congress to pass the electronical communications privacy act of 1986 making satellite hijacking a felony the automatic wow. transmitter identification system was developed in response to this incident John's action, while generating publicity and sympathy from some angry satellite dish owners, also raised concerns about potential interference with satellite borns communications. What the f 
fuck is this nigga's name? John R. McDonald? I want to see what he looks like. I'm, I'm chat. Listen, I'm gonna. We're gonna look up. We're gonna look up this man. It's like I'm curious if he's gonna look exactly like I picture in my head. I'm just curious. Okay. How, see, how did I know? How did I know he was gonna look exactly like this? I just knew. Like I just knew that this nigga was gonna have this exact player build. This is the man. This is the suspect in question, guys. How the f did I know? That he was gonna resemble this and have this exact same player build. How the f did I know, bro? Concerns about potential interference with satellite borns communications. The aftermath saw legislative changes and technological developments to safeguard satellite transmission. That's good. John's motivations That's really good. were rooted in opposition to what he perceived as unfair pricing and restrictive trade practices. That's why he, he did that? he being young and naive in navigating the media landscape. What? American Ecstasy Broadcast Hijacking. On Sunday, September 6, 1987, a broadcast 87? of the Three Daughters on the Jeez. Playboy channel faced an unusual disruption when a text-only religious message appeared. The message, quoting Bible verses from Exodus 28, conveyed a There's religious no way. admonition. Thus saith the Lord thy God, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Bro, how much of a devout Christian do you have to be, right? To hijack an entire TV station just to, just to copy and paste a Bible verse. Everybody has a Bible. Everybody can buy a Bible. We can all read that shit ourselves. Okay, I'm out here trying to watch Family Feud and here you are hijacking the shit just to copy and paste a Bible verse on the screen. You're acting like Jehovah's Witness did not come to my door this morning to tell me that exact same shit. What are you, why, what was the point of this? I don't get it, man. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Based. Thomas Haney, employed by the <laughs> Christian Broadcasting Network, became the focal point of an investigation into satellite privacy linked to this incident. Convicted of satellite hacking, Haney, who maintained his innocence, marked the first person prosecuted under the newly enacted federal law. Oh, the like law from the last guy that the last the guy did. aftermath of the Captain Minai incident. Chat, we got to see what this nigga look like too. We got to see what this nigga look like. Whenever they're identified, we got to see what they look like. We got to know. You guys think he's going to have the same like a uh, neck, uh, jawline, neck situation where like it blends in? Or like, do you think it's going to be like a stud looking kind of guy? What do you guys think? You think it's going to be a Chad? I doubt it's going to be a Chad. Nobody in Chad works. Nobody who's a Chad works in uh, t uh, t film or television production. Nobody does that. Okay. Those are, those are for the actors. Oh, is this him? I think this is him, guys. God damn, he's old. Why lock his ass up? He's going to kick the bucket in like five years. There's no point in throwing him in jail. Bro, what's the point in throwing him in jail? He won't even be fresh meat. Okay. This is the furthest thing from fresh meat. I would, I would just let him, I, I would just let him do his thing, bro. I would just let him do his thing. It's fucked up what he did, but I would just let him do his thing. In the aftermath of the Captain Minai incident, investigators honed in on CBN due to the religious nature of the transmission and technical clues left by the jamming signal. Dude, that's Analysis crazy. Of a VHS recording a from Christian the Playboy news Uplink broadcast the hijack. Revealed distinctive technical markers by a Christian network in the video or Thomas, organization. Serving as an Uplink engineer on CBN, was on duty at the time of the disruption. CBN contested the case, asserting that the FCC's evidence was circumstantial, lacking witnesses, and unable to trace the signal's origin. Oh. During the investigation, attempts to replicate the incident using CBN's equipment were unsuccessful. Damn! As by CBN spokesman, Dino McCann. Who the f*** names your kid Dino? <laughs> Additionally, CBN argued He's that right. the power of Thomas's disposal was insufficient to jam Playboy signal. However, government witnesses countered, affirming the capability of the CBN station Following a deadlock in the initial stages, the jury eventually sided with the prosecution, finding That's Thomas Haney guilty on two of six counts. Notably, Thomas was acquitted of charges related to the interference with American Hey, free my boy! Hey, free him up! He's too old! The recording. Free him the up, dog! He's old! resulted in Thomas receiving three years of probation, a $1,000 fine, and 150 hours of community service. He's not making it through that 150 hours of community service, bro. He's not doing that shit. Yeah, he'll probably do like 25 before like he uh he eventually uh just gives up, you know, but uh I mean, I would. I would after like 25 hours. Max Headroom incident. I'm aware that every YouTube has already talked about this hijacking, but like it or not, 
This is the most iconic TV hijacking of all time and oh, I really? just have to mention it for this video, but I'll make it quick. One night of November 22nd, 1987. Yo, why is it always 1987? Like what the stations, WGN TV and WTTW were hijacked, resulting in a pirate broadcast featuring an unidentified person wearing a Max Headroom mask and costume. What the? The first incident occurred during WGN's TV's newscast. Oh my God. A masked figure swayed in front of a background resembling Max Headrooms. Oh my God. Accompanied by a buzzing sound. Nigga, that's weird. The interruption weird. lasted 17 seconds before control was regained. The second incident Nigga, took place during WTTW's airing of Doctor Who, lasting about 90 seconds with the masked figure referencing various topics. Despite a federal communications commission Dog, investigation, that looks like a serial killer. Identified the masked figure made obscure references, held up a Pepsi while mentioning Coca Cola's slogan, and engaged in bizarre behavior, what the including a crude scene with a fly swatter. Technical experts suggested the hijack required significant expertise and transmitting power, likely originating from a location in the line of sight of both broadcast towers. Oh my Speculation god. Speculation about the perpetrators focused on disgruntled employees of Chicago's hacker community, but their identities and motives remain unknown. FCC penalties were Dude, that looks but the statute weird. of limitations expired in 1992. Despite brief public attention, the incident influenced cyberpunk tropes and has been referenced in media over the years. This is a very bizarre hijacking. The fact that the people were never caught just makes this hijacking the most popular yeah, one. Yeah, that's strange. Super Bowl 2009 that's crazy. Hijack. Yup, even the Super Bowl got hijacked, which is one of the most viewed broadcasts in television history, the Arizona Cardinals came close to a Super Bowl victory on February 1st, 2009, when Larry Fitzgerald's spectacular play gave them a three-point lead in Super Bowl 43. However, oh, cool. this thrilling moment I totally turned into an unexpected controversy for some Comcast subscribers in Tucson, Arizona. Just 13 seconds after Fitzgerald's historic move, Comcast broadcast on KVOA faced a bizarre interruption. Uh -oh. Instead of celebrating the Cardinal success, a subset of viewers was subjected to explicit content for 30 seconds. Oh my god! Disturbance and okay, chat, listen. It's one thing, right? It's one thing to just be watching TV for free, okay? And this shit pops up. You know what I'm saying? It's it, like, it's, it's bad, but like, it comes with the territory. You know, these things might happen. It's a completely different thing to be a paying customer okay there were 80,000 paying customers who paid to watch the Super Bowl okay as they should right and in the middle of them watching their paid broadcast the nastiest most disgusting scene just shows up on the screen bro I would be flabbergasted look at me using white big words look at me using big white words I would be flabbergasted bro I will be flabbergasted. That is absolutely ridiculous. The hijack led to a prolonged mystery, leaving both Comcast employees and FBI agents puzzled about its origin. Yeah, that's crazy. The investigation you think they have the utmost security at the Super Bowl? With Cox, a neighboring cable company that shared a partnership with Comcast. The broadcast feed for the Super Bowl came from Cox, and the interruption raised questions about whether they were involved. Cox employees initially argued that Cox they is crazy. Be at fault since they didn't provide any adult entertainment channels responsible for the disruption. The focus then shifted to Frank Gonzalez, uh -oh. a 36-year-old technician at Cox. With a seemingly impeccable record, Gonzalez had been involved in implementing new broadcast equipment for Comcast in 2008. During these interactions, he gained access to Comcast servers and received login credentials, which according to the FBI reports, were not changed from defaults. Oh. Armed with the Comcast multimedia router and login credentials, Gonzalez had the tools to execute this explicit interruption during the Super Bowl. He's the guilty. The involved physically connecting a router to Cox's server. He's guilty. Enabling remote access to the entire Comcast God network. God damn. Gonzalez, from the comfort Come of his Come on, own Gonzalez. Home, infiltrated Comcast system and executed the unauthorized broadcast interruption. Oh Despite my God. Despite Gonzalez's efforts to cover his tracks. What the? 
enough. Forensic experts discovered a crucial footprint connecting him to the intrusion. Authentication software logged the username Corp slash F Gonzalez. What an Gonzalez idiot! The admin responsible what an idiot! Oh my god! Gonzalez was arrested, charged with computer tampering, and eventually pleaded guilty. This nigga gotta be the smartest, dumbest person I've ever seen ever. How the you put your entire what is wrong with you? Dog, you could have put any name. You could have... Dog, you could have put any name. I, I swear to God, you could have put any name. They would have never caught your ass. You could have put any name, bro. You could have put Pixie Princess there. They would have never caught... You... What? So what war... What made you... What made you put your... Your government name under... The, how, who... Do, why would you do that, bro? I get so mad when I see criminals just doing a terrible job. It's like, bro, if you're going to be a criminal, at least be good at it, okay? At least be good at it so we can look at your work in awe and say to ourselves, well, goddamn, at least he's good. But if you're not even good and you're putting your goddamn name as the digital footprint for the shit, then how do you expect us to sit there and go to us and say to ourselves, wow, he was really good at that. Who's behind his actions remain a mystery. Until this day, we don't know why he did it. Speculation Nobody cares, range from man. him being a jokester or prankster to seeking a sense of power or importance. Gonzalez's lenient punishment of three hey, years don't probation, drop the soul, big no homie. jail time, and the lingering ambiguity surrounding his motive continues to puzzle observers after done. a decade long. That shit pissed me off. I'm not gonna lie to you. That pissed me off. That pissed me off because like, I like to think of myself as a connoisseur of crime, all right? That came out wrong. I'm, I don't like crime. I'm just, I like to see... Uh, anyways, let me explain myself better. What I was trying to say was I like to s consider myself somebody who likes to observe certain crimes committed and give my flowers, especially if they're committed well, depending on what the crime is, of course, right? Something like this, if it's flawlessly executed, I got to give you my flowers. I got to give you my flowers because it's like, okay, you did a bad thing, but at least you did it in a good way because, nigga, you had one job. You had one job. You would have gotten away with it too, okay? You had one job. It's all good though, man. Uh, anyways, guys, that was the craziest TV hijackings of all time. Make sure you guys let me know which one you guys think is the craziest one. Personally, I think the last one was the stupidest one, okay? You that, that fucking use an idiot, okay? But you guys let me know which one of these is crazy. I think the one where the guy dressed up with the mask and that shit looked mad serial killer to me, man. I wouldn't be surprised if Jeffrey Dahmer or like Ted Bundy was the one behind that shit. But you guys let me know which one is like the craziest one in here. Make sure you guys like the video, okay? Some of you guys are not liking the video as well, man. I see that. It doesn't take that much time to like the video, okay? Y'all making it seem like I'm asking you to give me half of your kidney. Like just like the video, okay? If you have not liked the video, sub to the channel if you guys have not subbed to the channel yet, man. We're trying to push this channel to 100k subscribers by the end of the year okay that is a goal of mine so uh make sure you guys sub to the channel if you guys have not subbed to the channel man let's get there as fast as we possibly can like the video if you guys have not liked the video uh give me some suggestions down below i i know i don't respond to a lot of the comments down below but i read every single one of them i promise you i read every single comment so you guys let me know uh suggestions down below i can't i can't respond to all of them because i'm so busy i'm so busy trying to make the content on all the channels so i can't respond to all of them but you guys let me know i read all the comments so make sure you guys let me leave me some suggestions down below on what to watch in the future uh let me know what part of this was the craziest part also let me know if you guys ever seen like a live hijacking of a tv network not like a person or anything like that i want to know about you anyways just let me know if you guys have any experiences with this in the future or if you have any experiences with this in the past and with all that being said guys i'm gonna see y'all in the next video she just how i'm coming yeah i did this on my own don't you tell me something because i did it all alone you ain't helping nothing no no nah, no nah. you ain't helping nothing no no nah, no nah. Came up from the guys and niggas show me some respect Niggas mad cause I ain't break them off on all these checks You ain't help with nothing, no, nah, nah You ain't help with nothing, no, nah, nah